Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Welcome to the Bible broadcast with preacher, teacher, and missionary Perry Demopoulos. The Bible broadcast is a ministry for the purpose that the lost might be saved, that the saved may be edified, and that the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, would be glorified. We hope that the Lord will bless you with today's message. Join in with us now and let's hear today's broadcast. The subject we are going to take up today has to do with a certain people during a specific time period called the Great Tribulation and those that are, what the Bible says, taken. Just who are they? What happens to them? Are these people good, moral people that deserve to go to heaven? Or are they those that do not love the truth? Are they going to heaven or not? If not, then where are they going? Now, the doctrine of those that are taken is a subject that has caused great confusion among those in the body of Christ. There are a great many professing Christians teaching that the church age believer in Christ is going to go through the great tribulation and the Holy Spirit makes it very clear the great tribulation is mentioned in Matthew 24, 21. And those very two words are mentioned again in Revelation 2, 22. And the church age believer thinks that he is going to get raptured out in this specific time period. Many true, sincere, but naive saints in Christ have not been taught to rightly divide the word of truth according to 2 Timothy 2.15. Therefore, they have not learned how to make the proper contrasts between two different things. There is an old adage among believers which goes like this, two things that are different are not the same. And that's very important to learn. May it also be inserted here that we are not to mix up the word tribulation, which is mentioned in the Apostle Paul's epistles to the church age, and mix up those personal tribulations and trials, such as Romans 5.3 or Romans 8.35, which reads, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, etc., and mix those up with a particular period called the Great Tribulation. Now, unfortunately, there are many brothers in Christ who could not rightly divide and have not rightly divided the word of truth, and therefore, they think that salvation is the same in all dispensations, and now you've got this chaos of doctrine where they're putting the church-age believer in the Great Tribulation, which is a mess. So what we're going to do is look at our text and patiently, by the instructions of our Heavenly Father, allow Him to speak to us, applying his means of interpretation, so that he will, by the Holy Spirit of God and his written word, show us just what he wanted to get through to us. Now let's go to the book of Matthew and read chapter 24. It would be best for you to read the entire chapter. Now time will not allow us to do that, but we're going to pick out some verses to show you the context of our passage, and we'll get to the specifics of the Verses that talk about those that are taken. Now let's read Matthew 24, verses 37 through 42. Matthew 24, 37 through 42. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. In chapter 24 of Matthew, look at verse 13. Notice that a man must endure to the end, so that he will be saved. So that has nothing to do with us. There's nothing concerning the church age believer where he has to endure to be saved. If you are saved, that means you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, look at verse 14. It talks about the gospel of the kingdom, which will be preached. 
That's not the gospel we are preaching today. Uh, the gospel that we preach today is the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that is the gospel of the grace of God, which the Apostle Paul was given for the church age. And then once the church is gone, there's a whole different gospel going to be preached in the Great Tribulation. So look at also at verse 15. The Holy Spirit writes here about the abomination of desolation. That's coming out of Daniel and his prophecy in Daniel chapter 9. Look at also at verse 16. The Lord Jesus Christ was talking about those in Judea to flee into the mountains. So you and I don't have to worry about fleeing into the mountains. Also verse 20. And he said that they would pray that their flight would not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. We are not Seventh-day Adventists because we're not under the law observing the Sabbath day, which would be a Saturday for the Jew. And not only that, the Apostle Paul makes absolutely no mention of the Sabbath when he mentions the commandments in Romans to the body of Christ in Romans 13. So we are dealing with something totally different. We're dealing with a time, a future period called the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 verse 7. And so you have to make a difference between what the Lord is going to take up with those Jews, those 12 tribes, and you must make the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles and the church of God, which is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 10, 32. For it says, give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. So the Apostle Paul makes it very, very clear that there are three different classes of people. First, the Jews, that would be those that come from Abraham and Isaac, not Ishmael, and Jacob, and then the 12 tribes mentioned in James chapter 1, 1, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Secondly, the second class in 1 Corinthians 10, 32 is the Gentiles. That would be anybody that is not of Jewish descent. And then thirdly, you have the church of God. Now that's very distinct from the other two classes. That would be any Jew or Gentile that has been born again, baptized by the Holy Spirit of God into the body of Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. A Jew that has accepted the Lord Jesus Christ is no longer a Jew. He's a spiritual, born-again child of God in Christ. And same with the Gentile. He's no longer a Gentile in the eyes of God. He's a born-again son of God, baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. So we have to make that very clear, that in Matthew 24, and dealing with those that will be taken, is our context, and we'll get to the verses, we're dealing with a specific people, not the body of Christ, during a specific time during the Great Tribulation. So Matthew 24 is very important for the believer to get, not because he's going to be there, but because we need to clear up something concerning these folks that are taken and who they are not. Now, in this chapter, we come across some interesting verbiage dealing with those that are taken, verses 39 and 40. Because of the fact that saints in the church age are caught up in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, which deals with the body of Christ, there are believers in Christ that think that the taken in Matthew 24 are us, those in the church age. Or many believe that those that are taken are those that are taken to heaven during that great tribulation. The terminology for those that go up during the tribulation, which is such a case, but a different event, has nothing to do with those here in our text that are taken, as we shall see. The terminology is different and vital. God is very careful and specific when it comes to his words and terminology. Now let's read verses 38 and 39 of chapter 24 of Matthew one more time. For as in the days that were before the flood, they, now make note of that word, they, were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not, that's a very important phrase to underline also, until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now notice that in verse 39, a certain people knew not, and that the flood came and took them all away. 
In other portions of Scripture, when you compare Scripture with Scripture, we find the explanation of what these certain people did not know. They did not know God. For in 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, where we're dealing with the Great Tribulation and the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin shows up, we read this in chapter 2, verse 8, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that what? No, not God. You see that? They knew not. In Matthew 24, 39, knew not. What did they not know? They did not know God. The them of Second Thessalonians 2, 8 are the wicked, those that are taken. Matthew 24, 39. Now, we will prove that. So you have to notice, first of all, the they and the them in Matthew 24, 38, 39 is speaking of those that are doing things and they don't even know God. That's what it said in Matthew 24 and verse 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be that has nothing to do with the rapture of the body of Christ. We're dealing with the literal, visible coming where the Lord Jesus Christ comes down to this earth. Notice also that they, the they and them, are in contrast to Noah. He's left on the earth. The others are taken. They're taken from the earth. Now, let's compare other scriptures to get a confirmation, Lord willing. And it says in Proverbs 10.30, The righteous shall never be removed. Now, this righteous here are those that will be doing what God will expect from them during the Great Tribulation. They're going to be living by faith. And also, they're going to have to reject the 666, the number of a man, during the Great Tribulation. So there is an element of works involved. And it says, the righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Do you see that? They won't inhabit the earth. They're taken from the earth. Now, what did the Lord Jesus Christ say in Matthew 5, 5? He said, blessed are the meek, for they shall, watch this, inherit the earth. Matthew chapters 5 through 7 are considered as the constitution for the millennium. People that will go into the millennium that come out and through the great tribulation and go into that 1,000 year reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. We leave this passage with an anonymous verse in verse 28 of Matthew 24, which says, For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now, that's very important. Now, we don't quite understand here why the Lord would insert that, especially the words, wheresoever the carcass, there will the eagles be gathered together. And we don't understand that until we get to Luke's gospel. And Luke's slant on this very same subject where the Lord allows Luke to give the answer to Matthew's verse. So we will get to, if you will, the answer to or supplementary verse of Matthew 24, 28, because in Luke's gospel, you get to hear the disciples ask a very important question, which begs the answer from the Lord himself. So let's be patient. A comparable verse to Matthew 24, verses 38 and 39, would be in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. And we're going to read the whole passage here, so then you'll get the context and the answer to Matthew's question, wheresoever the carcass, there will the eagles be gathered together. So we read now Luke 17, verses 26 through 37. Now listen carefully. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. There's that word them again. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted it, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Now, let's move down to verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that day there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, 
and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Now here comes the answer. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? They're asking the question concerning one shall be taken. Well, taken to where? That's the disciples' question. Where, Lord? And he said unto them, now watch it, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Notice the question that the disciples ask in verse 37, Where, Lord? You see, they wanted to know where the one shall be taken. Now that is the question which begs the Lord's answer and also is our answer why the Lord said what he said in Matthew 24, verse 28. Jesus answered, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. That is the key to our answer. Now look at Revelation 19, verses 17 to 21. Look at the word taken along with fowls. That's a synonym for birds. So look at Revelation 19, 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Now, of course, if you read the chapter, we're dealing with the second advent and the destruction of the mother of harlots in chapters 17 and 18. And you got now the return of the great God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And it says in verse 18, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains. Now look at verse 20. And the beast was taken. Do you see that? Taken again. These aren't good people that are being taken up, raptured up during the latter end of the great tribulation. The body of Christ is not going through half of the tribulation or part of the tribulation. Verse 20 says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Now, do you see that? Now we can check other places throughout the entire Bible to see who are those that are taken. They are the wicked. The context is always the Great Tribulation, prophesied in the Old Testament also, although many of these references in the Old Testament would have an historical application. We should never exclude the doctrinal application. Now let's look at some verses together. Psalm 915. Listen carefully. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Psalm 10 verse 2. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. We're dealing with doctrinally future events during the great tribulation. Psalm 59 verse 12. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride. And for cursing and lying which they speak. Now notice the phrase, shall be taken. Let's go over to the book of Job, where you're going to find so much dealing with the great tribulation. The book of Job consists of 42 chapters. Well, the great tribulation, that last half, is 42 months. That's three and a half years. Look at Job 34, 20. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight, and pass away. And the mighty shall be taken, look at this, away without hand. Just like those during Noah's flood, while Noah and his family went into the ark, all the rest were washed away. They were taken away. Proverbs eleven six. The righteous of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Again, another future passage doctrinally. You see, these folks that are taken are those that are not doing right. The deliverance is for those that are upright, but the transgressors shall be taken. Look at also in Ezekiel, what that prophet said concerning this doctrinally future event. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 13. My net also will I spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare. And I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans, yet shall he not see it. 
though he shall die there. So historically, yes, it has one meaning, but doctrinally, we're dealing with a future event in the near future when the church first gets raptured out, and we're dealing with something that is right around the corner concerning this great tribulation for Gentiles, that's people that are not saved, and the Jews. Then we find this word taken in the phrase taken out of the way, which is a very interesting phrase because we find that in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, right in the context of the man of sin, the son of perdition. Now, many think it is the Holy Spirit that's taken out of the way. Others believe it's the body of Christ, the church that is taken out of the way. Let us continue along this theme of taken, but with some added verbiage, taken out of the way. Now, it says in chapter 2, verse 7 of Second Thessalonians, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Well, who is this he? It's not the Holy Spirit. It's not the church, which many fundamentalists have taught, and they missed the revelation. With a little bit of searching the scripture and the help of a Bible concordance, you would come across that phrase only one more time in the entire Bible. That means that all that God wants to say about it will be enough in the added revelation in one more verse. Without the help of the, quote, originals, end of quote, Hebrew or the Greek. So we'd better stop and pay attention to what he wants to say. And boy, he can sure say a lot in just one phrase mentioned only twice in the entire Bible. So here in God's explanation of 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, we find that very same phrase taken out of the way in Job chapter 24, verse 24, which says, They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought low. They are, now watch this, taken out of the way as all other and cut off as the tops of the ears of corn. So we have it. The key to 2 Thessalonians 2.7 is Job 24.24. The answer to the question, who is he that is taken out of the way in 2 Thessalonians 2.7? Well, it is Job 24.24. He will exalt himself as it's mentioned in Isaiah 14.13. I will exalt myself above the stars. If that weren't enough, in 2 Thessalonians 2.4 we read, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. He will do that for a little while, as in little while mentioned in Psalm 37.10, and especially in John 16, verses 16 through 19, where you find the Lord himself saying little while seven times. Let's continue with Job 24.24. 24. He will be brought low as in Isaiah 2.12 and he will be taken out of the way as all other. So there you have it. You see, he is that wicked, mentioned in Second Thessalonians 2.8, which reads, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So, notice something else in Job 24.24. 24, we find this phrase, taken out of the way, but we also find some added revelation here, cut off. Do you see that? So this begins another branch of this particular theme of those that are taken. We also find cut off. So everywhere you find the word cut off, most of the time it's dealing with people that are cut off from the earth because cut off, the first time it's mentioned when we're dealing with interpretation of the scriptures, there is a law called the law of first mention. Well, the first time you find the phrase cut off is in Genesis 9:11, which reads, And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Well, all the people except eight souls were cut off from the earth. Do you see that? That's exactly what will happen as it was in the days of Noah. People are going to be taken. They are cut off from the earth. All right, let's get that doctrinally in another place. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 15, 
but also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, everyone from the face of the earth. 1 Samuel 20, verse 15. So when our Lord and Savior comes back, he's going to destroy so many people. There's going to be blood up to the horse's bridle in a particular area. These are people that are killed. The Lord is going to stomp on them and they're going to be cut off. We read in Psalm 39, verses 9 through 11, For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, you see that type of tribulation? The wicked shall not be, they're going to be wiped off the earth. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. So you'll find that many times throughout the scriptures. Proverbs 2.22 says, But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. So there you have it, friends. Those that are taken, let's say this first of all in concluding our subject today. When we compare caught up in First Thessalonians 4.17, those that are caught up is dealing with the church age where the body of Christ, those that are alive and remain, are caught up with them, the dead bodies of those that were saved. Their bodies will be resurrected and we meet those in the air with the Lord in the clouds. The term caught up for you and me is for the body of Christ before the great tribulation starts. That's why we can comfort one another. First Thessalonians 4.18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, those that are caught up can be comforted because they are delivered. In First Thessalonians 1.10, it says, We are delivered from the wrath to come. You see that? We are not delivered in the wrath which has come or will come. No. We are delivered from the wrath to come, and that also will be a great subject we are going to deal with next time. Number two, those that are taken are not those in the Great Tribulation that are taken as a rapture for obedient saints, although there will be a rapture for those in the Great Tribulation. But our context, Matthew 24, 38 and 39, is dealing with those that are taken, that is, cut off, taken from the earth. So in concluding, we can be comforted that this context in Matthew 24, 38 and 39 is not dealing with you and me. We are not concerned with the man of sin, the son of perdition. The most important admonition for the body of Christ is mentioned in Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. In Philippians 3, verse 20, we read, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our job is to keep our eyes right on the Lord Jesus Christ. Like the Apostle Paul said to Titus in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That, for you and me, dear brother, is the upcoming event of which we are going to, by the grace of God, talk about next time. And if you are listening to this broadcast, dear friend, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, the most important thing you need to do is to acknowledge the fact that you are a guilty sinner before God Almighty and acknowledge the fact that the price of sin had already been paid by Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross for you. The Bible says that Jesus Christ died according to the scriptures and that he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again according to the scriptures. He paid the price of your sin debt. There's no way you can pay that price by your good works, by your religion, by whatever it may be, where your self-righteousness is trying to justify yourself. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for him to save you, and he will give you eternal life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. You've been listening to the Bible broadcast with Perry Demopoulos. We're glad that you joined with us for today's broadcast, and hope the Lord has spoken to your heart. If you'd like to know more about the Christian walk, please let us know. 
If you've made the decision to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you may write to us at the following email address, pdkjv1611 at gmail.com. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you in His will. All his ransom home to bring, then anew this song will sing. Hallelujah! What